Hi, I'm Erica from The Pancake Princess and today we are trying shortbread. So shortbread is a really simple buttery cookie usually made from flour, sugar, and butter, but you would be surprised at the number of permutations we found in these nine recipes. So I'm gonna taste my way through all nine popular internet recipes and I'll let you know my thoughts on each. Before we get started tasting all of these shortbread recipes, I'm going to taste a shortbread from Walker's and from Dean's. These are popular brands and so this way we can compare which of these recipes are closest to the professionals. Here's the Walker's shortbread. Okay, Walker's shortbread is very crisp, a little bit crunchier than I remember, very buttery, little pops of salt, um, but I would say not as butter forward as I recall. But overall, I can see what's the standard. Very delicious. And then for Dean's, to me, Dean's is definitely softer than Walker's. Like Walker's has like a crunch to it. Dean's is a little more sandy and melt in your mouth and it tastes like it has rice flour in it. Let's see if it actually does. There is actually no rice flour in Dean's, but vegetable margarine is listed before butter which I think explains why these are significantly less buttery tasting compared to Walker's. Overall, between this two, I would say I like the texture of Dean's better, but the flavor of Walker's. So let's see if any of these cookies, we can get that same like kind of tender shortbread texture with a really buttery flavor. Oh, come on, I'll take a look at there. Oh, it's doing it good. Right? Go ahead, take a nibble. That's it. Away you go. Maybe. This first recipe is the official Ted Lasso recipe as released by Apple TV. It is extremely simple, just butter, flour, sugar, salt. They use powdered sugar instead of regular sugar, so that extra starch in the powdered sugar should lend kind of like a thicker, softer texture to the cookie. They also recommend that you use high quality butter, so this is one of the recipes that I use Kerrygold butter in. And it uses a creaming, creamed butter method, as well as a relatively long bake time of almost an hour at 300 degrees. To me, I think that when these Ted Lasso shortbread were fresh, they very closely imitate the texture of a Dean shortbread. So like very sandy, um, but more tender than a Dean shortbread. And I think the flavor is way better. Like you get a lot of butter, a lot of like nice salty pops um, within the shortbread. I think overall, it's like a very thick and soft um, and tender shortbread. Like it really softens up after the first day when it's a little more crisp. Um, so if you like like a very thick, tender, buttery shortbread, this is definitely a crowd favorite. This recipe comes from Food 52, which they got from a bakery called Bien Cui, excuse my horrible French accent. And this recipe was notable because it uses a one-to-one -one ratio of butter to flour. So that is the highest proportion of butter across all of these recipes. Like Ted Lasso, it also calls for powdered sugar, creamed butter, it does call for an overnight chill before another relatively long bake time of a little over an hour, 300 degrees. Okay, once again, on day one, the shortbread was definitely a little more crisp, but over time, um, it definitely softens to have like a very tender consistency to the point where it gets a little bit gluey in the mouth. The flavor though is incredible, like definitely extremely buttery, like the butter definitely comes through. Um, I would say that it is just more dense and a little firmer in terms of the chew compared to Ted Lasso. So I kind of prefer like the softer bite of Ted Lasso, but I really like the flavor of Food 52, even though some tasters called it too buttery, which I did not think and still do not believe is a thing. Um, so if you want like extremely buttery and like a very dense shortbread that will kind of soften into like a nice, slightly pasty bite, I would go with Food 52. This recipe is by Tartine, which is a famous bakery in San Francisco. And this recipe stood out because it is one of two recipes I tested that add cornstarch to the dough. So this one uses cornstarch in conjunction with granulated sugar, which is also sprinkled on top before baking. It uses the cream butter method, a press in dough method, as opposed to like rolling out the dough. I find the press in method to be a little more labor intensive because it's hard to get it even using your fingers. Um, and then it also called for a high quality butter. So this is another recipe that I used Kerrygold butter in. 
So once again, all of these shortbread were like pretty crisp on day one, but most of them softened significantly on day two. And so for tartine, I think that this is one that was always a little more tender to begin with. It looks very similar to New York Times, which you'll see in a few cookies, but it's like very thick, very tender. Um, the texture is like extremely fine and crumbly, almost like a little bit floury and starchy. And so I retasted Dean's to see if it was like at all similar. And I think Dean's is just like remains uber crisp, whereas like tartine softens quite a bit. But there is some kind of similarity in like the sandiness between each of them. But I realized Dean's kind of tastes like a graham cracker. Like there's like a whole like whole weediness, heartiness almost about it. Whereas tartine tastes like butter, which I prefer. So I think I would choose tartine if you want like a thick and almost like cakey soft shortbread that's gonna be like very short in the mouth, very floury. Um, I will say the butter flavor is not quite as prominent as like Food 52, but like you still get a nice like homemade butter flavor as opposed to a store-bought cookie. This recipe is by Cooks Illustrated, and this recipe was very complex. So it is the other recipe that uses cornstarch in the dough, but it combines it with powdered sugar. So the cornstarch and the powdered sugar, plus a little bit of ground up oat flour, is meant to reduce the gluten in the cookie and provide a more tender texture. It also calls for a very high initial bake temperature of 450 before dropping it to 250 for the majority of the bake. And then you turn off the oven, you let it sit in that turned off oven for about an hour to let the shortbread crisp up. And lastly, it calls for baking it in a like nine inch spring form pan and you like cut a little circle out of the middle. I think for the purpose of like cutting the rest of the cookies into wedges, unclear. This recipe called for a lot of different things. Uh, let's see if it's worth it. This shortbread is like no other shortbread in the um, 11 shortbreads that we have. It is extremely dense. The day of the tasting, um, the shortbread was like pretty crisp. Like I do think that spending an hour in the oven kind of like drying out helped crisp up the outside. But even in like the next day, it definitely got like a very dense and almost pasty texture. I think I mentioned that one of the earlier shortbreads gets a little bit gluey in the mouth. And this one I would say is like probably the most gluey. Like it's just so dense. And I think the oat flour gives it kind of like a not so attractive like beige hue. Um, flavor wise, I'm not getting as much butter, I feel like, as other shortbread because the oat texture, the oat flavor is kind of taking over. Overall, this cookie was a lot of work. I forgot to mention that it also uses a reverse creaming method as opposed to regular creaming, which wasn't any more work than usual, but just an unusual technique. And I don't think that it really benefited the cookie. So, you know, lots of unique components here, but I probably would not make this one again. This recipe is by Taste of Home. It is the simplest recipe with just three ingredients. It is actually almost identical to the food and wine recipe in terms of the ratio of ingredients, but it's the only recipe to use brown sugar, and I was really curious to see how that would play out as opposed to the granulated or powdered sugar. Um, it calls for creamed butter, the roll-out method, which I find a little bit easier and preferable when you're making shortbread, and I like the flexibility that you can chill it for as little as 30 minutes or up to overnight. Okay, overall, I think this cookie had a really unique texture on the first day of being like pretty firm and crisp on the outside with like an interesting mix of being crumbly, but a little bit chewy. And then it definitely softens on day two, but I think from the get-go, the brown sugar lends it a lot more moisture, um, which lend makes it a little softer than the average shortbread. And it definitely lends it an element of flavor. So you kind of get this like syrupy, like, maple-y notes almost from the brown sugar that definitely departs from a regular shortbread. So overall, I didn't, I want my shortbread to be a little more crisp, so I probably would not use brown sugar going forward. I also don't like how it detracts from like the pure butter flavor, um, but it is an interesting take on shortbread. This recipe is by Food & Wine, so again, very similar ratios to Taste of Home, except this uses granulated sugar instead of brown sugar. It also adds a little bit of vanilla, but technique-wise, it's different in that it calls for melted butter and everything is mixed together in a food processor, which is very different. Everything else, all of the other recipes call for being mixed in like a stand mixer. Um, and then it also calls for a quick 10-minute freeze before being baked. Okay, I have to say I hate getting out my food processor because I hate cleaning it, but I really do think that the food processor made a difference in these food and wine cookies because you get a lot of layers in the cookie itself that you don't see in the other recipes. So you get this like really nice, like flaky, crisp, 
crunchy texture that stayed crisp for many days afterwards versus a lot of the cookies softened up right after. This was one of the cookies that stayed crisp for days. And so I compared it with the Walker shortbread and I think that the flavor is actually very comparable. Like both are like very buttery, nice pops of salt, like a very classic shortbread flavor. Um, obviously the Food 52 ones are just like a little bit thinner, but I think if you like made them a little bit thicker, I can see the same kind of layers in the Walker shortbread. So I wonder if they also use like a food processor technique to get that like very crisp, crunchy texture. Um, but overall, really enjoyed this one, thought it had great texture and great flavor. This recipe is by the New York Times. This was one of two recipes I tried that uses rice flour. This was one of the easiest recipes to make because it calls for melted butter that just gets stirred into the rice flour, flour, sugar, and salt. You press it into a pan, you don't even have to till it, just bake it. Okay, so I have brought the tartine cookie back because it is very similar, as you can see, to the New York Times cookie in terms of like thickness. They both have sugar sprinkled on top. Uh, I would say the main difference here is that New York Times is like dry and crisp all the way through, whereas even on day one, tartine is like a little bit softer with just like a little more of like a tender bite to it. I think that New York Times is a little more bland in flavor. Like I think the rice flour somehow seems like it's coming through just like the slightest bit and like how floury and starchy it is. And the butter flavor seems a little more muted, though I will say I think that there's like a very good like sweet and salty balance with this cooking. Overall, my preference was for tartine of like the two cookies just because I prefer like a little bit of a more tender cookie and I think the butter flavor is a little more prominent here. But they are very similar. New York Times is very easy to make and if you want to try experimenting with rice flour, I feel like it's a great recipe to start with. I will also note that the bottom of the cookie is overbaked, but one of my tasters noted that the top looks the way it's supposed to be. So maybe there's some issue with the recipe. I would just try like using parchment paper and baking your cookies on like higher up in the oven so they're not as close to the bottom of the rack to try to avoid scorching on the bottom. This recipe is by Christina Tosi. This is Christina's take on the Ted Lasso shortbread. It is extremely interesting for its use of powdered sugar and a little bit of brown sugar, but most notably for its use of egg yolks. So she calls for three egg yolks in the recipe, which you could go so far as to say that egg yolks take it, takes it like outside of the realm of shortbread. But Dory Greenspan, who is the queen of cookies, also has a similar shortbread recipe that calls for egg yolks. So let's see how it tastes. I think universally all of the tasters agreed that this does not taste like your traditional shortbread. A lot of people noted that it tasted like a blondie, like there's a very chewy texture to it. The brown sugar, the egg yolks create this like very rich and flavorful, um, almost like a cake. Like it really does taste like a blondie to me. This was my brother's favorite shortbread, shortbread out of all of the ones that we tried. To me, it just like doesn't resemble anything close to what I think of a shortbread. Like it doesn't have a short texture. It's not like dry and crisp. It's not like tender and crumbly. It is just a delicious blondie to me. So if that's what you're looking for, I would give this recipe a try. This recipe is by Seasons and Suppers and this is her crispy Scottish shortbread. And it stood out because it uses rice flour like New York Times. She also specifically calls for high quality European style butter, which has a higher butter fat than American style butters. Um, so when you use an American butter, typically a lower butter fat means that it has more water, which would result in a moister dough. So using European butter is a must for this recipe to keep it nice and crispy. Um, she also calls for a really interesting twice baked technique. So kind of similar to biscotti, you bake the cookies, you cut them all up, and then you put them back in the oven, which is now turned off to let them crisp up to 30, for 30 to 45 minutes. Even though this cookie is somewhat more work than the other cookies, I think that it is definitely worth it. This is what I think of when I think of like a traditional delicious shortbread. Um, it kind of has like the crumbly flakiness from the food and wine cookie, but like the really like super butteriness from Food 52 and then kind of like the satisfying crisp from Tartine. I think that the thickness is really impressive. It was one of the cookies that was like the most dry and crisp that stayed dry and crisp over the next few days, um, very similar to food and wine. Um, and it's somewhat similar to Walker's, I would say like definitely a little bit thicker um, in this shape but both have like the very like dry and crisp and kind of crunchy texture. 
um, with like a good amount of like butter flavor coming through. I think that Seasons and Suppers is actually a little sweeter than Walker's, um, but overall I think between Seasons and Suppers and uh, food and wine, I keep getting these ones confused, I think those are like most similar texturally to a Walker shortbread. Okay, for the wrap up, we'll start with what is most similar to a Walker shortbread. I would definitely say seasoned and suppers or food and wine if you're trying to imitate that like really dry, crisp, buttery, crunchy shortbread. If we're going for Dean's, this was a request from my friend Arvind and I honestly don't think that any of these shortbread like really mimic Dean's very well. Like I think Tartine kind of gets at like the sandy texture of Dean's, but it's not quite as crunchy. And then Cook's Illustrated kind of has like the blander flavor because I don't feel like Dean's is very butter forward. Um, but unfortunately, I think your quest for Dean's will have to continue because if it were me, I would go for like a Walker's shortbread. So seasons and suppers are food and wine. And then in terms of my overall favorite shortbread, I think I would go for Ted Lasso. I really love like the tender, slightly crisp bite of Ted Lasso. And I think the butter flavor, the balance of salt in it is just so good. And then my second favorite is probably Seasons and Suppers. I think it's just like such a great classic shortbread. And then I really like Tartine for like a kind of sandier, um, like a little bit softer of a shortbread texture. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what bake-off you'd like to see next. You can see more bake-off content at thepancakeprincess.com, on my Instagram at thepancakeprincess, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>